Hey, welcome to an introduction to the TI-84 graphing calculator. If you have a TI-83 plus or any other version of the TI-84, uh, everything we do in this video will work very similarly to what you have. So let's first familiarize ourselves with the layout of the calculator. So we've got our numbers here. We can do all sorts of basic operations with parentheses here, uh, division, multiplication, subtraction, addition. So let's try something simple like 5 plus 6. Enter. And you can see over here on our screen, this is your screen obviously will be above your buttons, but here I, you can see this big screen here is uh, just 5 plus 6, and then it shows you the output on the right side. Um, let's try one other one, uh, maybe 8 divided by 4, and that gives us 2. So other than these basic operations that you see here, you know, squared, 5 squared is 25, we can get these secondary operations that you see in blue on my calculator. The way we get to those is by doing second, and then we can hit any of these buttons, and we're kind of dealing with the blue above the buttons. So if I want to take the square root of 9, I can get 3 over here. Now one thing you have to watch out for is if I want to do second square root of 9, then I can see that this arrow, in order to get out of this, I can hit the right arrow, and then subtract 2. And I should get 3 minus 2 is 1. If you have a TI-83, you'll just have to manage the parentheses that they provide for you. So one thing that we also want to keep an eye out for is that we have a minus sign here, where I'm hovering over, and we also have a negative sign, which is down near the bottom. If I want to clear my screen, I can always just hit clear, clear my screen, and then you know I've got a, a fresh home screen. So let's just try using that minus sign, 6 minus 3, we can get 3 here. Now, if I try 6, and then hit the negative sign, 3, you can see that it looks a little bit different. It's shorter, it's a little higher compared to the minus sign. I get this error. So sometimes when you're doing some operations and maybe you hit a wrong button or um, the calculator's not sure what you're trying to do, you can get an error. Rather than hitting quit, which will just take us back to where we were, let's hit go to, and that'll hopefully take us right to the point where we made a mistake. So I'm gonna hit, I can either scroll down to two and hit enter, or I can just hit the button two. And see it's highlighting calculator is highlighting for us on that negative sign so it knows. So I'm going to just override that to a minus sign and then I can hit enter and I get my solution again. Let's talk a little bit about PEMDAS. Again with the negative sign if you hit negative 3 I'm going to square that. Here's my squared button. Okay, I know that if I square a negative number I should get a positive number but here the answer comes out negative. That's because the calculator does order of operations. We know that exponents come before multiplication of this minus sign, so it's, it's squaring the 3 and then multiplying by negative 1. So if I want to do what I was hoping to do, negative 3, I can put that in parentheses first and then square that. If I want to raise it to a different exponent, I can say 5 raised with this caret to the third power and get 125. Another example of orders of operation, if I do 5 minus 2 divided by 3, well, that's going to do the division first because that comes first in PEMDAS, and then it's going to do 5 minus whatever's left over. If I want to do 5 minus 2 in parentheses and then divide by 3. I can write it, use my parentheses to my advantage. I get 1. So that covers kind of our primary buttons, our primary operations, some of our secondary options. Um, there are even more useful tools in the math menu right here. So if I click on math, I can see I've got um, fractions, decimals, I can get a cube root. I can do any root of a function. Um, we can scroll down, you'll see summations. Here we've got probability on the top, so if I scroll over, I get even more menus. 
if I'm in a menu like this, I can get out of that menu by hitting second and then quit, which is right above mode. And that'll just get me back to my home screen. So if you're ever lost or you kind of get tangled up in something, just hit second quit and you should be able to get back to your home screen. We're going to use the, the math operations again. Um, let's say we wanted to do something like 24 divided by 320. So I know that they're both even, so I could reduce it, but I'm not really sure how much. If I hit enter, it's going to give me the decimal output. But let's say I wanted to know what that reduced fraction was. Now I can hit math and then frac. It'll put it into a fraction for me. So that's taking your answer, this answer, which is your most recent answer, and hitting frac. And we get a reduced, the most reduced fraction, which is 3 over 40. If I ever want to use something I've done before, I can scroll up by hitting the up arrow. This is on the newer versions with the calculator. Let's say I wanted to find what this fraction was for 4.33. If I highlight that and I hit enter, it'll put it down on my, my line. Then I can say math, frac, or make it into a fraction. And it'll do 13 over 3. Now it's called a graphing calculator because you can actually show graphs on it. The way you get to that menu is to hit y equals up here in the top left corner. So let's hit y equals. Now we know that we have uh, every function that we want to graph starts with y equals something something. So I'm going to try graphing 2. Now if I want my variable, that's this button right here. So here's x, 2x plus 1. Okay, so let's take a look at that graph. Oh, I've got a funky window here. Okay, so if I want to get back to my original window, I'm going to hit zoom, and then I can see a bunch of different zoom in, zoom out. Um, the one that we're primarily going to use is the zoom standard, so 6 here. So I can hit 6, and it gives me a nice 10 by 10 window. And you can see the line 2x plus 1 that I've graphed. Some of your calculators will have color, which is nice. We can go back to our y equals, I could clear this out if I wanted, or I could just add another function. Say I wanted to do a parabola like x squared. I can hit graph to see it. You can see that parabola right there. So I've got my line and the parabola. Let's go back to y equals. Um, if I want to turn a graph on or off without deleting the, the actual equation, I can scroll over the equal sign, enter, and now that function, does, this first function is no longer highlighted, so it won't graph. And I'll just see my parabola. I'm going to turn that back on. I'm going to go down here. If I want to uh, clear out a function, just hit clear. So let's say I wanted to graph 0.5x minus 2. So now I've got a slope of 0.5 and a y-intercept of negative 2. Okay, so I've got my two lines here. If you want to know some values on the lines, you can trace it. And you get this little, this cursor that blinks for you. Um, if I want to switch to the other line, I just hit down. And then I'll switch to the other line. I can hit back up to get to the first line. Um, and you can see the coordinates here of the exact point of where your cursor is. Now the last thing we want to do is in this video is we're going to find the intersection between the two lines. So let's do second trace. You get this calc menu. And you have all these sorts of things. We can find a value. We can find a zero where it crosses the x-axis. Minimums, maximums, and then intersections. That's what I want to do right now. So I want to find the intersection between those two lines. So if I hit 5, so the first curve or the first line is this one. It's asking if that's right, I say yep, enter. Then I can hit the second curve, enter. And now it's saying, do you want to guess? Well, yep. And we get our intersection point at negative two, negative three. So that's the coordinates. The x value is negative two, the y value is negative three. And I get that coordinate of that intersection point. I can hit clear to get out of this graph, or I can hit second, quit, and get back to my home screen where I started. If you miss anything along the way, 
you can go back in the video, pause at different points, and you can see my keystrokes along the bottom um, and try to follow along. Okay? Good luck.